Hello and welcome back to Whiskey Wars. My name is Sean and tonight it will be the second round of March Madness. In this round we're going to find out what is the best, what we're going to call a classic bourbon under $40. Let's get into it. Okay, so here is the lineup for round two. And in my opinion, all of these are classic bourbons for sure. Uh, they're certainly on someone's list as a daily, I would imagine, or certainly one that they go back to over and over again. Uh, I would say all of these are fairly popular. So, and they're all fairly matched uh, proof wise as well. Uh, so of course we have Evan Williams single barrel. We have Four Roses Small Batch. We have 1792 Small Batch. We have Woodford Reserve, the standard version, if I can get it out there. And then, of course, Elijah Craig Small Batch. So let's get these things in the glass and let's see which one will come out on top. So, glass A. There we go, glass A. Little B, Evan Williams. I'm gonna try and do lighter pours this time because last time, I had a lot left over that I had to drink off camera. It was terrible. Glass B. Get there. B. Uh, there we go. That will be Four Roses Small Batch. Glass C. 1792. Go C. 1792 Small Batch. Glass D, Woodford Reserve, the official, well actually let me show the cup here. There we go, D, uh, Woodford Reserve, which of, uh, of course is the official bourbon of the Kentucky Derby. And then glass E, Elijah Craig small batch. Of course, there we go, E. Elijah Craig, and you know, just uh, according to the own, its own bottle, it might be the father of bourbon. Probably not, but you know, who's to say? Now, get these things on our Drunken Susan spinner mixer upper, whatever we want to call it. Uh, whatever you want to call it. Whatever this thing may be, what it certainly does is mix up whiskey. It does a fine job of that. I need to make some slots in this thing so they don't slide around though. That's why I have to watch them. They get unruly here. All right. I'm just gonna look at the camera for a little bit. All right, we are sufficiently spun up. Take them off out of order here. There we go, throw that down there. Okay, let's go ahead and get in this. We'll call this glass one. We're gonna work our way to glass five and see which one comes out on top. I'm not gonna do any nosing, just get right into the palate and see what these whiskeys are all about. So here's our first one. Hopefully you can see that at home. And here we go. Okay, so I think I spotted the Brown Foreman product already. I believe that's Woodford, hard to say yet. Uh, it'll be on screen though, which whatever one that was. Um, so you guys will know if I'm right or not. In any case, got the typical Brown Foreman profile on that since it is their, that is their parent company. So brown sugar, caramel, nice kind of chocolate notes, milk chocolate, uh, nice toasty oak notes in there for sure. Little hints of cinnamon, uh, definitely some other baking spices in there for sure. Uh, just one of my favorite palettes. Of course, you get the little banana hint in there. Not quite as strong as an Old Forester, but certainly there. Now, I could be wrong, but to me, my palate anyway, that tastes like Woodford. But we'll see as we go along. Maybe I'll find another one that's even more Woodfordy than that one. On to glass two. Let's go. So, forgot to hold up glass two. There we go. Now you guys know what it is. Of course, I would have already posted down here what it is, but now we're just verifying. Uh, quite a bit different than glass one. Lighter flavors for sure. Uh, a little more sour notes, but not like in a bad way. Definitely got some citrus in there, some orange. Uh, lighter caramels, not as much brown sugar. Still present, but not as much as glass one. Uh, more of a cinnamon presence than glass one. Um, not entirely sure what that one is. It's just more of a standard bourbon profile. Um, oh, well, not bad though. Let's move on to glass number 
three. This time I will hold it up beforehand. There we go. All right, glass three. Well, I believe we found the four roses. You guys already know if I did or not. Um, yeah, uh, it's kind of like lemon, cinnamon, and pepper with a little bit of sugar mixed in. So if that's a, a combination that sounds good to you, then maybe you enjoy this more than I do. I don't know for sure if it's the four roses, but it kind of reminds me of that. I don't know, we'll see. Let's move on to glass number four. Uh, real quick on glass number three though, not as good as these two, whatever that may be. I believe it's the four roses, but I don't know, we'll see. Glass four. Realize I did it again, showing you glass four. Of course, it's already down the bottom, but nonetheless, glass four, uh, I believe it's 1792. Don't know for certain, but I always think of Barton 1792 products as being like Old Forester light. So they don't have quite as dark a notes as an Old Forester Brown Foreman product, Woodford Reserve, potentially number one. Um, but you know, they're kind of along those same lines. So brown sugars, there is that hint of banana note, although the banana note on a 1792 is different to me than an Old Forester banana note. Uh, but still enjoyable, um, not, I would say so far in my mind, uh, I would say glass four and glass one are in strong contention. And this one is also nice, even though it's a very standard bourbon so far, liking those three quite a bit, not liking glass three very much. All right, glass number five, there you go. Whatever this may be, down the hatch. Well, now I'm confused and you've known it all along. So now I think that this is the Woodford, which means this must be either 1792 or Elijah Craig. Um, did like this quite a bit though, whatever this is. Um, it's very Brown Foreman profile, but I said that about this one and I can't be wrong on both of them. In any case, uh, I am, I did enjoy these, this one, this one, and this one, I would say the most so far, but now we're gonna do some blinds off camera so I don't bore you guys with all the extra sipping and uh, we'll see which one comes out on top. So we'll be right back. And we're back. Uh, so before we get into the rankings, if you could, please hit that like button. And if you're really enjoying the video, then please subscribe. Now though, Let's get into these rankings. And I feel like after doing all these back-to-backs, I'm even more confused than I was to begin with. So I'm gonna guess, first of all, what I think they are, and then we'll see how it goes. So I believe I picked Woodford first. This one could either be 1792 or Elijah Craig, which I don't, in my mind, those are not similar, but I, I don't know. And then I think this is Elijah Craig, I believe, and then Evelyn Williams Single Barrel, and then Four Roses. Uh, I'm pretty certain on the Four Roses one. That's about the only one I'm actually certain of. Uh, the others, you know, I, honestly, outside of Four Roses, all of these were really good. Um, this is like way over here for me. So anyway, I'm pretty sure this is Four Roses, so let's start with fifth. Let's see if I'm right. Uh, B, yes. Okay, so it did stand out to me as being the worst, and it's still the worst. So we'll move that down there. That's B, that's Four Roses, and I still don't like it. So sorry, Four Roses fans, does nothing for me. Now, this is where it gets tricky, because I don't know what I'm about to see at the bottom of this glass. Uh, it could be Evan Williams, it could be Elijah Craig, or I could be totally surprised and it could be something else. Um, e, okay, so uh, Elijah Craig. So I had a 50-50 shot there, I guess. Um, well, not quite. Anyway, 20, 25%, what, people to do odds, you know what things are. Uh, Elijah Craig coming in fourth. This bottle I've had for a while, it's opened up with air and it has gotten better for sure. Um, it was really, really oaky when I first got it. Um, now it's much more acceptable 
and I actually really enjoyed it tonight. It was really hard to decide between the top four. So this is not a bad bottle at all, even though it's in fourth. Next, I'm guessing Evan Williams, A. A. A is Evan Williams. Okay, so, <clears throat> and this was probably of traditional bourbons. This is probably the most traditional bourbon on the table. I mean, just right down middle of the line, very, very standard bourbon notes. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, I think for the price point, I mean, this is right at the $25 mark uh, here locally, and that was the cutoff. So if you were under 25, then you were not accepted into our under 40, because I thought it would be unfair for bourbons that were under the $25 price point to compete with $40 bourbons. Um, so that was the cutoff. So this one just barely made the list. I mean, this is a great budget bottle, but I mean, it's right. It just barely made the cut. Okay, now, just like last time, we're gonna pull these off because, uh, you know, some people, uh, they just wanna skip to the end of the video and see the results. Well, now you can't. We know what they are, but only we know because we've watched the whole video. And thank you guys. Thank you, everyone that's watched the whole video, and I hope you're enjoying it. Now to our top two. It's either 1792 in first place or Woodford, who's coming out on top. Let's see. It is C, and C is 1792 in second. So not a bad placement at all. Uh, I don't know if I necessarily guessed this correctly, but either way, it was good. And air has helped this bottle, because when I first opened it, again, kind of like the Elijah Craig, didn't care for it a whole lot on first opening. I think it's improved tremendously. And uh, yeah, so now it's second in replacement, which means Woodford, which is not necessarily a surprise for me because I do love this bottle, especially in this kind of proof range. So there it is, folks. Here's our top dogs, Woodford and 1792. So that is round two of March Madness, folks. These are the two that are moving on. These three are getting pushed to the wayside. And uh, so these two will move on and they will face some strong competition for sure. The next round will be six bourbons that these will be in. So that will be very interesting, especially for myself. So we will crown a winner at the end of all this March Madness. Looking forward to that. I hope you guys are as well. Again, I have made a special playlist for the best under 40, this March Madness thing we're doing. And right here is the subscribe button. So go ahead and do both of those things if you haven't already. And until next time, folks, just remember, you can never have too much good whiskey.